Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me, as always, is Vivek Iyer. Earnings are coming in thick and fast. We'll discuss that in greater detail. For now, markets staying in the green. The Bank Nifty, though, has just slipped into the red. So, at the flat line, but a lot to discuss today. Our uh, good part is, you know, the mid caps and the small caps outperformed. So that's the good part. But quite a lot lined up on the show. And we have the result of Sri Simmons as well. That we'll address that as well. So let's start off with the top headline. Stocks bounced after the steep decline yesterday. Realty, FMCG and metals lead the recovery, while financials are the big laggards. Mid-caps outperform. Indian garment makers, Gokulda's exports and others surge as the companies become beneficiaries of the disruptions in Bangladesh as global companies may look towards uh, the Bangladesh Plus One supply chain as an opportunity. Marico shares fall nearly 4% despite a good quarter. The stock is under pressure following the political turmoil in Bangladesh. 44% of the company's international sales comes in from the neighbouring country. Royalty stock surge, as sources tell CNBC TV18, the government is weighing offering grandfathering for long-term capital gains tax on real estate till July 2024. It may also allow both a flat tax and one with indexation as options. No decision is taken yet, but there could be an indication in the Finance Minister's reply to the Parliament. Sirma is under pressure after reporting a weak Q1 FI25 set of numbers gross margin along with profit after tax decline. Stock is down over 4% today. Okay, all right, those are the top headlines for the Nifty. It has come off from the day's high, so 99 points higher on the Nifty right now. But as I said, uh, the opening gains, they have been sold into. The Bank Nifty is in the red right now. Mid-caps are doing well, 9 tenths of a percent higher there. The small cap index is also doing well. Uh, we do have earnings which are coming in. Symphony, for instance, is locked in upper circuit. We'll discuss that in greater detail. But a lot to track and a lot of discussions lined up as well. Uh, but again, it's the same thing. Uh, one day down and one day up. That has been the story. Uh, so, you know, the only thing that's going up continuously is actually the VIX index. <laughs> so the volatile yeah. index is what is doing very well in the last couple of trading sessions. But Hormal is standing by the wall and uh, he's standing there to take us through all of the mid-cap stocks that are moving around in the session. Plenty of movers in the broader markets that does not appear to be a lot of confidence at higher levels for the benchmark indices, which is why the gains are getting sold into. But stock-specific activity continues and the RPSG group stocks, two of them in particular, First Source and PCBL, continue to scale newer highs, although both of them are off the highs of the day, but still trading with gains of anywhere between 4 to 9 percent. Wellspun living the record date for the buyback was yesterday, 6.5 percent higher today, and Jyoti Labs is having a good day in today's session. Real estate is staging a buyback. Back, uh, is taking a comeback in today's session. It snapped a four-day losing streak today and Godrej Properties, Brigade and Prestige Estates having a good day at the office in today's session. Some of the other stocks, the link to the Bangladesh political crisis, Marico is trading lower, almost 5% down. Now, Gokul Das Exports is having a good day, as is SP Apparels, Vardaman Textiles, all of them seeing gains of anywhere between 8 to 17% in today's session. Some stocks doing well on the back of volumes, and KPR Mills is one of them, Sarah Sanitary Wear as well, and DCM Sriram seeing gains of 3.5% on the back of strong volumes. And lastly, some earnings impacts in today's session, BLS International, 12% higher now at the highest point of the day, Schneider Electric, Triveni Turbine and Symphony after the buyback that it announced at over 100% premium to Monday's closing price is now trading with gains of almost 20%. Back to you guys. Okay, yes, big gains there. Earnings, the impact can be seen. Thank you so much, Ramas, for joining us. Let's welcome Srikant Johan from Kodak Securities for a technical check on the markets. Srikant, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, what's the mood of the market now? We did see massive opening gains, but we have seen some uh, cool off, cooling off from those levels as well. Will we see some uh, consolidation at these levels? What are the charts suggesting? Yeah, good evening, uh, Vivek. Good evening, uh, Sonal. I think, see, the like, uh, market is is like going to consolidate because the way it has fallen from the highs of 25,000 to almost uh, 24,000, uh, it was a vertical fall and in a very short span of time we saw these levels so most of the time whenever we see such type of sell off in the market we see some more liquidation or some uh, like profit taking at important resistance level and yesterday when the market opened lower mm -hmm. that time the highest level was somewhere close to 24350 360 levels and from there only today we are seeing some uh, again the reaction in the market so i am of the view that the market is going to consolidate between these levels and most of the time, whenever there is like uncertainty or uncertainty in the market, we saw 100-day simple moving average acting as important support level for the market. 
So this time, this 100-day simple moving average is around 23,500, 600 levels. And I'm of the view that the market can correct up to those levels. So that's the overall view. But yes, it's a like overall trend of the market is bullish and the strategy should be to buy on dips. But this time, the strategy should be to buy a little deeper, uh, I'm going to say uh, deeper on the correction side. We can so you suggest that you know wait a little bit before going in uh but anything you have uh, you know for our viewers in terms of what they could look at currently any uh, you know long or short trades yeah i think see vivek most of the stock have rallied uh, extremely like uh, close to their extreme levels in a very short span of time in last let's say few months Supreme industry was somewhere close to 3,500 levels in the month of March. From there, all the way it moved to 6,500. And now again, is uh, back to the levels of 50, 5,100, 5,200 levels. So from here, I'm expecting stock to move towards the levels of 6,000 or 6,200 again. It's attractive buy at current levels. It is very close to its important support levels. So Supreme industry is a buy at current levels with a target of 6,000. We can keep stop loss if there is any trading position, then close to 4,800 levels. And the other stock which we like is Castrol. The reason is because it has spent a lot of time uh, above the levels of uh, 240 and from there we saw the rally up to 270, 75. But now again, the stock is coming back to those same levels. Uh, I'm of the view that it's a buy. Uh, currently, the reservoir ratio is quite favorable for the stock. It's a buy at current level with a stop loss close to, let's say, 240. I'm expecting stock to move back to the levels of 275 or 290. All right. Thank you so much, Srikant, uh, for joining us, giving us your individual picks. We'll sip into a break now. Atul Ganatra from Cotton Association of India will join in on the other side to discuss the impact of Bangladesh crisis on Indian textile and the cotton sector as well. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still tuned in to Midcap Radar. The big story now, the political crisis in Bangladesh is likely to benefit the Indian textile industry as international buyers may shift focus to alternative markets like India. Indian garment makers, Gokuldas Exports, Lux, Industri Lux Industries, Nitin Spinners, all of them are trading higher. These are considered to be the beneficiaries of the Bangladesh Plus One supply chain. We spoke with Monte Carlo Fashions and head of Indian Textpreneurs Federation and both believe this crisis will be sentiment positive for India. Listen in. There is a positive and there is a uh, negative also because we also export a lot of cotton yarn and cotton fabrics to Bangladesh that might get impacted. But at the same time, we also import, uh, some of the brands import garments from Bangladesh. But yes, because uh, other uh, countries, when they look at Bangladesh, they will definitely look for Bangladesh plus one country and India is the only alternative uh, which can you know substitute Bangladesh in garments. Bangladesh built a robust ecosystem in apparel manufacturing. Their monthly run rate of apparel exports is in the range of 3.8 to 4 billion dollars. Their ambition of uh, achieving 50 billion dollar exports is a commendable one. And due to these incidents, definitely uh, some kind of a setback, at least in terms of sentiments they will face from international buyers. Uh, the buyers will naturally develop uh, a kind of uh, fear over the delivery times because in apparel manufacturing as well as in supply chain delivery times are very crucial this kind of turbulence will create a small kind of a fear among buyers and they may try to divert some portion of orders to countries like india particularly in cotton apparels we also uh, have a strong export presence in bangladesh in terms of yarn and our fabrics Monthly, approximately around 3 crore kgs of yarn we are exporting, including fabrics, our monthly run rate is around 1,000 crores per month to Bangladesh. Bangladesh don't have a strong manufacturing capability in yarn, so for the apparel export ambition, India is the right partner to supply yarn and fabrics. So, quick recovery of Bangladesh is also very important for the healthy uh, operation condition of spinning and fabric sector here. We are hearing from the ground from Bangladesh, they are they may come back uh, in a week time, uh, at least in the factory operation levels. So that, that will be good for uh, spending sector. 
Well, you know, we just heard from Monte Carlo Fashions and the Indian Textpreneurs Federation about how this particular development in Bangladesh could impact the Indian cotton and yarn ecosystem. To discuss more on this, we have Atul Ganatra, the president of the Cotton Association of India, joining us now. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Ganatra. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, give us your first take on how this particular development can impact the Indian ecosystem. Yeah, good afternoon. Accordingly to me, there will be a no much of impact on uh, these issues. In fact, uh, for cotton, as far as cotton is concerned, we are doing export to Bangladesh, but it is the end of season. So no much impact of cotton will be there. There will be a little impact on yarn exporters will be there. But it is a very big positive news for the garment industry. And I believe garment industry will do very good. And the lot of international brands which are buying at present from Bangladesh, they will turn to India due to this. Again and again, there is certain issues are coming. So I feel there will be a shifting of international big brands from Bangladesh to India. And that will be a very positive news for Indian garment industry. If you look at today, uh, this, this news, our industry is taking it positively because if you see most of the uh, stocks of the garment industry and textile industry like Nitin, KPR, Vardhaman, Wellspun, Alok, SP and many more are doing today 5 to 15 percent stocks are up. So I believe this will be a very positive for the Indian garment industry. Also, okay. Bangladesh is dumping a lot of cheap rate uh, close to Indian market. And if that will be stopped, that will be also benefit to Indian cloth market. Yes, please. Mm. Okay, all right. We'll get that. Thank you for your uh, insights here. Mr. Ganatra, I wanted to understand, we were speaking to Monte Carlo as well today. They indicated that it will be negative for the yarn industry maybe because if a lot of it goes to Bangladesh and now that some of the factories would be shut, that would mean excess supply in the country itself. I wanted to understand if there's any data of how much cotton and yarn do we export to Bangladesh. You're saying it's end of the season. What are the estimates that we have for the next season in that case? Yeah. You see, this year, Indian export, cotton export will be around 28 lakh bales. Out of this, 20 lakh bales will be exported to Bangladesh. And our almost quota of Bangladesh is all, already done. And it is now slack season. Coming two months, it will be a, no much cotton exports will be there to the Bangladesh. Our new season will start from 15th October. And I hope till that Bangladesh situation will improve. But about yarn, you see Bangladesh don't have any raw material, much of cotton. They are not having any cotton growing in the country. They are depend on India, USA, Australia, Brazil. As far as yarn, we do 25 to 30 percent of our yarn export to mainly to the Vietnam, Bangladesh and China. But if yarn export will little slow down, but our cloth and garments movement will improve uh, far better than what we are doing now. So one side there will be a little drop, but other side we are expecting this will be a very much positive to the our textile industry. Uh, Mr. Ganatra, a two-part question, you know, as a follow-up to that. Uh, number one, how do you see prices of cotton uh, as well as yarn, you know, moving at least in the near term on the back of this uh, sudden development that's happened? And number yeah. two, you know, while you say it is a positive for Indian garment manufacturers, uh, can you quantify it in some form for us in terms of, uh, you know, what is it that currently India gains, you know, from the overall export market and where can they take it higher up to? Yes. You see, ba Bangladesh problem is they don't have any raw material. They do import of maximum raw material like cotton, cotton yarn, etc. Only benefit to the China, I mean Bangladesh, is their labor is cheap and power is cheap. But now after this uh, new power policy has come, lot of Indian mills also, they are also having uh, captive power. So our power also is comparable with Bangladesh and our quality and quantity what we can offer that will be and the consistency will be there from the India. So I think a lot of buyers will shift from uh, Bangladesh to India. As far as cotton is concerned, 
the rate difference between ice and Indian cotton, we are uh, now as on today, ice future is at 68 cent, which is around 46,000 and Indian cotton is at 57,000. But ice cotton future is of December month and it is this future is only of 26.5 mm, which is a short staple. And against that, our Indian cotton rate is 29 mm, which is much superior cotton. If we have to compare I, anything with the Indian cotton, we have to compare Kotluk index, which is around 80 cent. And if we add 11% import duty, still our Indian cotton is cheap and best. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Ganatra, for joining us today and giving us all those details. So largely, it's positive for the Indian government industry. The cotton industry does not get impacted too much. The yarn industry may be a bit of a negative because the exports to Bangladesh could be impacted. TBS Motors numbers uh, flashing for you. It's largely an inline set versus the poll. Margins at 11.5%, which compares with the poll of 11.5%. The profits also absolutely in line with estimates. The stock is holding uh, in the green, up around 8 tenths per percent. Of course, we'll get Sonia with more details on this one as well. For now, the stock is at the day's high. We'll sip into a short break. When we come back, we'll get you more on the uh, markets and put focus on Symphony. The stock is up 20% after reporting its quarter one earnings. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Midcap Radar. The stock in focus is Symphony. The stock has hit the upper circuit after reporting a strong set of numbers, and the company has also announced a buyback. Wamak is here with more details. Well, absolutely. It's a very strong set of numbers coming in from Symphony. Revenue has surged by almost 76%. The gross margins have improved uh, by almost 100 basis points to 51%. But the operational performance of the company is stellar. Uh, the ma margins have ma risen from 8.6% to 21% roughly. And as a result, the EBITDA has surged from 26 crores to 111 crores. This in turn is also driving a very huge jump in the net profit as well, which which has gone up from 24 crores to 88 crores. Uh, but apart from a very strong set of numbers, like you rightly pointed out, Vivek, this uh, company has gone ahead and uh, announced a buyback. They said that uh, the, the, they, the board has gone ahead and approved a buyback for up, up to 71.4 crores, and they will be buying back to uh, lakh 85,600 equity shares at a price of 2,500 per share, uh, which, as you can see, is coming at a significant premium uh, to the current market price. But it is important to note that the uh, buyback price does seem uh, attractive, uh, but it is important to look at it in context of the acceptance ratio. The acceptance ratio stands at 0.41%, which implies that only four shares out of 1,000 shares uh, will be bought back. And ev even in the event that the promoter does not participate in the buyback, uh, the acceptance ratio is still very low at only 15 shares for every 1,000 shares held. So overall, uh, while the buyback price may seem attractive, uh, the upside for retail investors may be limited. So definitely symphony and focus on the back of strong set of numbers and the buyback that they have announced. Thank you so much for that, Vamakshi. So, you've, number one, it's a very strong operational performance from Symphony, no doubt about that. Uh, but also, you know, thank you for tempering the expectations in terms of the buyback, the actual quantum, and what is it that a retail shareholder will be able to actually tender and will get accepted. Uh, but one more stock on the radar is NCC. You know, just around 15 to 20 minutes ago, the company reported its Q1 set. Operationally, it appears that NCC delivered a strong set of numbers. But the one thing to keep on mind is the order inflow. The Q1 order inflow is just around 400 crores, while the company had given an order inflow guidance for FI25 in the range of 20 to 22,000 crores. So it appears as though a lot of heavy lifting would have to be done Q2 onwards by the company. Q1, remember, across the entire infrastructure space has been muted in terms of order inflow activity on the back of the elections. But that's all the time we have on this edition of Pitcap Radar. Mutual Fund Corner when we return. <laughs> 